thank you so much for joining in again for yet another session. As we say, every Saturday, same time, same location. Uh, that is the same link. So even if we fail to send you a WhatsApp request or a chat on LinkedIn, please join on the same link. It's not going to change. At least for near future, we are not going to change the same link. So same time, same location, every Saturday. Thank you for joining in again. We are having a very wonderful session by two of the beautiful people, one from Macau near China and one from India. So both people will collaborate. I think uh, after a long time, this collaboration we are seeing on this platform. Uh, until now, for in between period of about, about six months, we had only one uh, session presenter, but it's a facilitation today. So thanks for joining in. Welcome, Harvey from Macau and Hiren from Baroda, India. All over to you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, VJ. Yeah. So, uh, hello, everyone. My name is Harvey and I'm from uh, Macau. Let me introduce myself. I start my agile journey on 2017. I work with many uh, organizations like uh, Galaxy, MGM, Casino, some uh, un local university in Macau. And then I mainly uh, do some uh, infrastructure and IT project. Uh, and I'm a project manager. I'm very passionate about to uh, review and grow team agility uh, to help uh, the team to uh, deliver, to deliver value uh, to the company uh, for the past few years. Yeah, I'm uh, very happy to, uh, I can describe myself as a, a servant leader and agilist and a practitioner. So that uh, I'm very happy to have uh, this opportunity to share some uh, insight about the uh, agile, agility for teams to all of you. So I'm not uh, an expert. Uh, I just, uh, I'm here to learn from uh, all of you. And also I, uh, I'm here to share some experience that I learned for the past few years. Okay. My topic is uh, agility for teams. Okay. Uh, so first, uh, I would like to uh, compare traditional project with uh, agile project management. Because at first uh, I use traditional waterboard uh, uh, approach to manage my project. And I found uh, in many places uh, when I plan a very detailed and uh, maybe uh, uh, 12 page, uh, 13 page of a uh, project plan, when it comes to uh, execution, always, always uh, has to uh, change. Uh, always uh, face facing change, uh, and the plan has to uh, we do we do again and lot uh, it spend a lot of time to we do it, uh, so that uh, I think agile is a more appropriate approach to uh, adapt for the change and then uh, able to uh, facing the rapid changing environment uh, in in a modern age, yeah. Because uh, uh, in, my, in my thought, uh, Agile is a framework, not the methodology. Uh, it allowed you to uh, craft a proper way to manage, manage your uh, project or product, deliver, uh, frequency deliver uh, product or service in inspect on value and then also uh, gain customer feedback frequency so that you can uh, satisfy our customer um, requirement and so that uh, the company benefits and can uh, can be uh, Can uh, more can be more successful in this uh, digital uh, world. 
I, I think uh, agile project management uh, benefit can summarize in five points. Build in quality. It, it can reduce risk and provide better visibility into project performance and increase project control because we we have a certain uh, ceremony we we will uh, uh, talk with the team uh, face to face every day and then know their impediment and then try to help a team member to solve solve thing out and then also uh, ship uh, do minim minimum uh, product uh, but and and then also uh, make sure its value can can deliver uh, in planned spring, and then also con uh, can have a, a continuous improvement. Yeah, that's why I, I think uh, agile project management is more able to adapt in uh, modern VUCA world. And then, uh, so I, ex I expect some uh, thought uh, for the uh, previous page. Uh, I would like, uh, I really like to uh, have your uh, feedback and then uh, to see your insight about uh, what is agility. So um, we all can uh, visit slido.com and then put, uh, 028033 and then uh, we can uh, type some uh, your opinion about uh, agility so that we can all uh, learn from each other what's your uh, perspective what's your uh, thinking what's your thinking so that we can connect okay So please, please can um, join this slido.com and just input the code. Then we can see uh, what's your insight. Yeah. Okay. Respond to change. Yes. Attentive plus. Yes. Customer centric. Okay. Nice. Okay. 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 Wow. So I uh, so I can see uh responding to change. Uh, most of the people uh type responding to change. Yes, definitely. This is a uh, uh, main agility is about a respond to change. Yeah. Okay. All right. So so uh, according to uh, James Highsmith, agility is ability to uh, both create and respond to change in order to profit in a turbulent business environment. That's very similar to uh, what input by uh, most of you. And also agility is the ability to balance flexibility and stability. What is the uh, stability? Maybe uh, many of you uh, will like me uh, working in a hierarchy structure company, but uh, hierarchy uh, structure uh, will provide the stability and also uh, some uh, on also will uh, provide some uh, very stable environment for the business to operate. But however, uh, for the 
to uh, to increase the adaptive adaptability uh, so that we need agile approach to uh, ensure the value can deliver continuously. Yeah, that's that my thought. Yeah. Since the world is uh, changing at a way, uh, as a very fast way, we have to uh, catch up with the uh, change, catch up with the change, and then I prepare myself, and then also uh, maybe adjust our mindset to uh, for the uh, project and product delivery, so that um, we can continuous learn and growth and improve uh, for, for our uh, performance and then upgrade our competency, yeah. So I think um, for the Agile Manifesto, uh, that is a group of uh, developers that uh, come together in a ski resort and one, they uh, came up with with uh, this fantastic manifesto that changed the software deliver the de development industry forever. Yeah. So let let us uh, look at the four main principle: individual and in interaction over process and tools. That means uh, we 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 are. Uh, better to um, communicate face-to-face -face directly um, instead of using uh, some product, product or some tools to non-directly uh, communicate, yeah. And then second is uh, working software uh, over comprehensive document in the, maybe in uh, 90s, dot where software development required to, uh, draft lots of uh, comprehensive document so that they can uh, they can test they, they can conduct the test however uh, it it will be more make sense for us to uh, have a working software we can actually see it actually uh, uh, know the uh, function that that will be more make sense to us also, a uh, customer collaboration over contract negotiation. Of course, contract uh, uh, is a uh, is needed, but however, we we don't like to uh, lock our customer in a contract uh, restriction, and uh, outcome uh, we we deliver something not usable for them. That will be. Uh, not appropriate, yeah. And the last one is uh, represent uh, the agility we responded to change over following pain. That's a uh, very important too. Okay. So uh, for the next is uh, connect time again. So. I, I would like to uh, see uh, which agile manifesto principle you like most that uh, can benefit team agility. I can uh, I can show the manifesto so that we can easily uh, input. Okay. Wait. So guys. Uh, we can start to input your your thought to the slider so that we can uh, okay responding to change over follower pen 
Okay. All right. Okay. Yes. Okay. So in, anyone uh, has different view about this question? Yeah, working software over comprehensive document. All right, nice. So majority uh, choose responding to change over follow a plan. Okay, I, I think most of you like this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And also working software. Okay. Nice. So. Okay. Uh, in the screen, I um, I put a, a green star that uh, remark for some manifesto so, uh, that I like uh, that benefit the team uh, agility actually. So uh, let's look at it, okay? Let's look at it uh, very quickly. Um, okay, the first one is uh, business people and developers. Okay, maybe must... uh, you can yeah. uh, remove the header and uh, make the content a little bit zoom in or something so we can able to view better, yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. So Hobi, no, maybe you can yeah put it on the presentation mode. No, no, just put it on the presentation mode, that would be. Okay. okay. Yeah, just press no F5. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Yeah, this is better. Yeah. Yeah, you can go to the screen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. Uh okay. So, so I uh, put some uh, stars here. Uh, oh, the star go to a different location. Okay. Okay. I, I think. Uh, in my, uh, I put some star that represent, uh, I, I think some some of the manifesto that benefit team agility. One of uh, them is business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. Uh, this mean business people uh, that that uh, provide the requirement and then uh, developer that uh, work on the coding, if they can work together daily so that they know the, what the customer needs and then uh, they can deliver it and then it incre deliver incremental uh, in cadence and then uh, regularly to meet a uh, customer satisfaction. But actually this uh, business people and developers, I think sh should describe as a team that's uh, represent connecting uh, business people, uh, developer and different department, uh, connect all the silo so that the uh, company can win uh, and then successfully deliver project. <clears throat> and then the second one is uh, the most e efficient and effective method of convey information is uh, within a development team is face-to-face -face, uh, conversation. Uh, I think this, this one uh, in COVID-19 environment is quite uh, difficult. I will, uh, I think this one I can uh, do some amendment, uh, just, uh, just comment if this is uh, this is, if this sound makes sense to you. Uh, I think the communication should be in person com communication. Uh, maybe we can through some uh, software Zoom team to uh, do in person uh, communication. 
that is also fit that uh, rules uh, in agile manufacturing. I think, yeah, because I think two thousand one don't have uh, such good quality mm -hmm. uh, voice uh, camera and then all the network speed. Yeah, I think this. So, one... Hobby, may I say something? You are making a very interesting connect here. Yeah. So the four agile values and twelve agile principles, right? These were yeah. Yeah. definitely very radical in two thousand one. Yeah. And the agile proponents came out with this agile manifesto yeah. consisting of these values, four values that you talked about earlier, and twelve. Yeah. Principles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each one of them, one way or the other, influences agility, right? Yes. In the last two decades, things have. <clears throat> transformed tremendously mm -hmm. the way of workings also have changed tremendously but mm -hmm. these principles still remain the same the technology yeah. might have changed the communication platforms communication tools yes. would have changed yes right so now uh, today we are like uh, in a virtual environment on a zoom call yeah but yeah. it is like you know and by enabling our cameras we are like having you know that yes. real time in space and time connected yeah. with each other sharing our thoughts mm -hmm. and working together right mm. so that's yes. that's uh, that's how the barriers are overcome by adopting an agile mindset and each yes. of these in one way or the other influence agility so i think you're making make a wonderful connection here yeah 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 yes okay um also um uh, i think continuous attention to technical excellence and a good design enhance agility because uh, we don't know anything about the project or product uh, upfront at the beginning so that uh, we have to uh, focus and closely work with uh, technical excellence and then they they can uh, do some uh, minimal viable product uh, minimum but efficient product uh, to gain feedback and then uh, to inspect value continuously. I think uh, this this one uh, is a very good one for me. And also the sim simplexity, we, we didn't do anything more than minimal and then uh, efficient because in link principle, uh, anything about, above uh, minimal and efficient that is a waste we we don't do that we only do some minimal we we don't uh do big we uh we do small and then we deliver frequency and inspect uh, its value and then continuously doing it over and over again and then also we will uh has retrospective to uh, learn what's done well, what uh, is has to improve. Yeah. Okay. Um. The last one is the best architecture requirement and design emerge, uh, from emerge from self organizing team. This one uh means we have to empower the team that's uh invoke leadership uh, give them the place and then environment so that they can have their uh, own design and then uh, own decision to uh, organize and deliver value yeah okay So uh, above is some um, agile manifesto principle that I think uh, can help team agility. Yeah, I would like to see uh, if you have some uh, dif different uh, view or different perspective. Uh, please uh, welcome to share. So I think what what uh, again uh, wonderfully connecting these uh, principles with the concept of agility, right? Again, because it, it it 
emanates from each of these. Let's say, for example, simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. Mm -hmm. So people soon realize that uh, working in the constraint, like when you're in traditional software development, right? Mm -hmm. you, you work within the tire and triangle and try to, you know, work towards timelines, work towards a schedule, right? So you're planning, you're planning uh, around activities, right? Now, Agile completely changed that that way of working. So you shifted mm -hmm. the focus from planning around activities, like, okay, we do first requirements analysis, then we do design, mm -hmm. and then we do uh, development, right? In a sequential fashion. And yeah. by the time you are ready to ship the product, the entire world has changed and the product is no more viable. Yes, so, yes. So people correct, realize, correct. you know, not everything under the sun we can do. So what is there something minimum which is, you know, which will be very attractive to the customer, which will uh, have a lot of value. Yeah. And then we can, you know, uh, hand it over to customer rapidly, frequently, incrementally and iteratively. So yes, these things have made product development easier for the organizations. And they ensure that the product goes into the hands of customer much early so that they can realize the business value early on, right? Yeah. Our yeah, customers, thanks. customers also have their own customers to serve. Whatever mm -hmm. goods and services that they are providing to the end user, they get the benefit of getting the good and the service early on, early enough in their hands. Yes. And yes. for the organization, yes. the benefit is an early feedback. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. this is what we wanted. Oh, no, 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 this is really not something that we really want. Maybe could you like change this thing? So this is also in part aspect of agility, how quickly are responding to the change, right? Yes, correct. So wonderful, Thanks. wonderful presentation. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, Howard. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Others can also chip in with their thoughts. So uh, we, we have agile, uh, we have agile uh, principle, uh, agile uh, behavior, agile uh, events. In the other ways, we have some fragile, fragile uh, behaviors that that is uh, anti pattern that's uh, against the uh, agile principle. So, uh, do you see any uh, anti pattern in your own organization context? that uh, go just reverse uh, accord against the uh, Agile principle so that we can also uh, do in the Slido so we can all see each other uh, contacts. There are, there are many that I worked with. How many I should put in? Mm -hmm. Any NT pattern? Link in the chat. Okay, uh, just just go to uh, Slido and uh, input the code uh, 028 033. Okay, I put it in the chat. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Slido.com. Planning around activity. Okay. Any more? Special approach, non regularity of uh, events. So sometimes uh, members uh, join the uh, planning events, sometimes they don't come, okay. Does not follow the pen. Less cooperation, okay.
So there's a limitation on the words, right? Uh, yeah. So this is a very good feedback. It looks like yeah, <laughs> world still needs a, a very heavy. The, the feedback is emerging. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so I, I would like to know who um, input the team structure and can, uh, can I invite you to, uh, exp to tell us a little bit more about uh, your organization, anti pattern Because uh, this one actually uh, is uh, one of uh, my previous organization uh, anti pattern yeah uh, my previous company uh, is a hierarchy company that uh, has a command and concur and then a very clear bureaucracy structure yeah so may i invite you uh, to share for the team structure, or any any one of you would like to share your your yeah. insight. Even I have uh, when it comes to team structure, uh, it doesn't really work uh, inside the organization the way it is actually uh, shared in the Scrum Guide. Uh, Agile Manifesto doesn't really say typically about it, but when Scrum Guide or something, if you actually see the uh, hierarchy or reporting to each other, like uh, team reporting to Scrum Master, Scrum Master reporting to Product Owner. So these kind of uh, structures are uh, still there. This yeah. is because uh, this is a legacy organization that is sustaining since long. And uh, I think SAFE has casually done, done it away with. They say that there's a pseudo structure that we develop, but uh, Scrum or any other um, uh, framework is yet to say about it. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you, VJ. Thank you, VJ. Okay. All right. Then let's. We have a few slides. Can I? Can I share my thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Welcome. Okay. It is really a great uh, presentation. Lot of good insights. Thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. Uh, based on my experience yes. at the team level, mm -hmm. we looked at the combination of a technical authority and execution authority and business authority. So let me give some details. When I said business authority or the content authority, Mm -hmm. owned by the product owners yeah. and the execution authority or the process authority owned by the scrum master okay and uh, the technical authority by the team as a team, team I mean, yeah. combination of uh, dev test and uh, architects and dba and all those things so okay. what we did was a collaboration between and combination of these three uh, important roles and responsibilities. Okay. You know, that made a kind of equilibrium and then made sense in one of our uh, product-driven organization. Yeah. Okay. That's, so that uh, you connect all the silo, silo uh, across uh, those three important roles in your company. Yes. Yes, congratulations. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, agile actually is um uh, my is a, a is a mindset uh, is a empiricism. We have to embrace, respect, deliver value on cadence 
we regularly deliver value regularly and inspect regularly to uh, fulfill customer needs. And also we have to uh, encourage creative thinking, give uh, our team members mentally, uh, mental uh, safety so that they feel safe. They, they are uh, very happy to uh, say something about uh, the uh, bad thing they see and then to improve and then continuous improvement but all this all this has to be uh led by uh, a very good leadership so that uh i i use this house of link to uh represent foundation is important there's a leadership that that's bring uh four pillars respect deliver on cadence, creative thinking, continuous improvement to deliver value to customers. How, how, uh, how, is, uh, how is a good leadership uh, should look like? I, I think this picture uh, provides a pretty uh, clear picture this one, uh, uh, I, I think uh, many of you uh, will see this one uh, in the uh, in your previous experience. However, uh, um, the modern leaders should go like do like this. They will uh, come down together with the team, and then uh, know their impediments and help them to move moving forward and provide a vision. Uh, and also encourage them, yeah. Oh, in conclusion, uh, <clears throat> that's, that's, uh, let me give a conclusion. Uh, so if, I, if you think uh, you have some uh, input or feedback, uh, welcome, welcome to our towns. So team agilities, uh, competency, describe the critical skill and agile principle and practice that. High performance agile team and team soft agile team used to create high quality solution for their customers. Agile teams, that is a high performing cross functional team, anchor uh, the competency by applying effective agile principles and practices. Uh, principle uh, that uh, can be related to manifesto practices can related to maybe we, some of you uh, use Scrum, some of you come back to uh, do your planning. Team of Agile team, that is a uh, scale that Agile team, but uh, this scale, scale up Agile team has to, um, firstly, of course, you have to uh, grow uh, very, good agile team first and then scale up to a uh, uh, team of team. And also uh, building quality, all agile team can apply agile practice to create high quality to support current and future business needs. Yeah, that's, that's my part of our ad agility for teams. Thank you uh, for all of you. So uh, now so I give the time to my lovely partner, Harin, uh, to hey, talk Harin, about- Thank you uh, so much. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was, my pleasure. It was really wonderful. Uh, English not being your first language, Cantonese and Mandarin is. So I wonder how wonderful it would be if, if you presented in Cantonese and uh, Mandarin. Wonderful. Thank you so much, buddy. Yeah, yeah, welcome. My pleasure. Thank you, Harry. Thank so, you, Harry. It was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your, your show time, Harry. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll yeah. be my, uh, sharing my screen. Uh, yeah, but yeah. before so, we, I start mine, if anyone has any questions for you, Harvey. I have uh, one question to, uh, I mean, it's, it's for all of us. Uh, if you look at the, the Agile Manifesto Principle number 10, See, mm -hmm. while 
we are releasing to the entire world the entire world is looking at these principles see is it not our responsibility to share it in a simple terms i mean you know simplicity the art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential is it like can we tell prioritization is very important something not very important no need to focus now or something like the pending work need to be focused why can't we rephrase it in a very simple english terms we are not we are not releasing it to a country we are releasing it across the world yeah why can't we absolutely you know, agree <laughs> that is the only point of concern to me rest all i am working <clears throat> We can write to uh, Jeff Sutherland and different answers to this this point. Mm. Uh, there's also a chance that uh, when you actually go to Agile Manifesto, and then there you can sign and actually comment also. This is actually being uh, referred by the Agile Alliance guys, uh, but definitely I have also reported it uh, almost a year back that this English needs to be changed and made simplified more. so that it looks more simple yes I, I absolutely yes yes, yes. yes. we have to also keep in mind that this was coined in 2001 and that yeah. time it was very radical right uh, yeah. and even after two decades of uh, agile and many of us like who are experienced who have been through this journey for close to like two decades and i actually read one very good article on this thing and i i shared this on my linkedin post that uh, this is actually not really very well even understood what author is meaning when you say simplicity and then say art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential so how do we interpret this thing? there could be many ways to yeah but very good observation nagesh i think I have, yeah that's fantastic yeah it it should be simple i mean agile yeah. is everything about being simplicity so you know everything should be simple including the The, the phrases also should be very in very simple english for everyone for whom yeah. the english is also not the native language right mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. but i see yes, one yes. benefit in it uh, yeah people want to understand that is the only point that people come to me or come to <laughs> just to understand that <laughs> yeah the test number 10 otherwise ten. it's all simple yeah number 10 is always a favorite right correct correct Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, number ten is where I get the maximum queries, even in a training program. What Absolutely. exactly it is? <laughs> yeah, true, true. All right. So, Kiran and Vijay, actually, there is a team working on Agile too. Okay, so some yeah. uh, some people are uh, working. There are many approaches. I think happened and it it didn't went through. But I think some currently Agile too is in uh, progress. Uh, let's we have to wait and see uh, whether they are addressing this or not. But I think uh, what you said is correct. Yeah. So this was formed twenty years back, and uh, yeah, maybe agile coaches can come up with simpler version when they present, so they can able yeah, to answer yeah, yeah. Uh, immediately to the team. Yeah. Thanks. Absolutely. Thanks, Vijay. Thanks, Vijay. Vijay. Yeah, agile too. Yeah, we have been hearing about that, and let's see uh, what's the next generation, right? Yeah. The world is uh, transforming. It continue to transform and evolve, and uh, there should be new way to look at the things. Yeah. All right. I'll be sharing my screen. Yeah, yeah, please. So you can unshare yours, uh, Harvey, so that I, I yeah, 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 yeah. okay, share. yeah. So let me know when you can see the screen on your side. Yes, we can see it very clearly. Thanks, thanks, Harvey, for acknowledging. So uh, once again, a very warm welcome to everyone who has joined this wonderful session, and uh, many many thanks for taking time out of your personal time or a weekend in attending this lovely presentation. So this uh, topic I have picked up from our uh, IC Agile's APM Agile Project and Delivery Management uh, Learning Program, and it's going to be very interesting. uh topic just a brief bio about myself uh, more than two decades of industry experience my most of my agile experience has been within the organization wherever i've worked uh, i had a very long term association with siemens at bangalore and vijay and many others who are on this uh, forum have been associated with siemens and i know some of them from my previous association so i am more of a practitioner and less of a theorist 
all my experience uh, knowledge is, is a culmination of the many years of experience uh, in agile as agile has progressed uh, we are like guinea pigs i started my journey way back in 2004 and that journey still continues so as hobby mentioned i'm here to learn the learning still continue and uh, looking forward to hearing your thoughts your observations and perceptions on on some of the things that i'm going to present today and, and make it more interactive i, I don't have any slido a quiz uh, kind of a tool today but i will mostly going through some of the slides uh, related to the topic so let's begin so as part of manage the system and empower the team which focus and align on values and outcomes there's one very key aspect uh, about uh, metrics metrics in itself is a very vast topic right so what we really look for is metrics that matter for systems optimization as we saw from hobby's presentation right uh, agility depends on several factors and we also have to look at the three key pillars of empiricism inspection transparency uh, sorry transparency and an adaptation how do we ensure that transparency is established throughout throughout the entire workflow and people have long realized now that so called vanity metrics do not really help uh, discover the systemic blocks for example traditionally people have been looking at defect density and then try to find out there are lots of defects and defects can be traced to bad coding coding guide yeah it, it could be attributed to some of these factors but here i think the focus is on how do we establish agility by looking at those systemic blocks which are actually you know acting as barriers and obstacles and nobody is taking notice of that so that's why we need to look at a metrics in a totally different way in a more radical way like i i use the term like actionable metrics why we call it actionable metrics because based on the insights that they provide we are able to drop some of the action items for bringing about, about improvements and optimizations at systems level not at a subsystem level so actionable metrics are needed for and that will enable learning and adaptation as you as you get feedback and you know where have where have been the lacuna and where have been the bottlenecks how do we resolve them and you know it the process is a process of continuous improvement we need to have objective measurements of progress and value that can provide context for decision making right so for taking key decisions about whether we need to scope in a certain thing or a scope out a certain thing or to extend a timeline or to negotiate with the customer on whether to continue to build this or drop that thing all of these need certain certain fulcrum points based on objective measurements which will provide the context for decision making and actionable metrics also needed for better predictability and overall systems optimization. In order to substantiate this point, I have a wonderful case study from my own organization, Siemens Health Services, where we had uh, this major transformation initiative by means of which we were able to come up with actionable metrics and that helped us improve a lot of systems uh, in our organization. Okay. Uh, certain key thoughts to anchor our thinking on objectives, what we do, why we do software measurement in the first place. So some, some key thoughts come to my mind, which I'd like to share with you. Very famous quote from Tom DiMarco, who, you cannot control what you cannot measure. So you, what you're trying to improve, first of all, you need to have a proper measurement in place. In the absence of appropriate measurement, you will not be able to measure and therefore you will not be able to control that not everything that counts can be counted not everything that is counted counts wonderful expression by albert einstein we can understand what he's trying to say here that we need to we need to just look at those uh, objective measures which really matters which which really help us you know improve and measure and then improve on continuous basis also one very interesting aspect of uh, metrics and measurement uh, i'm sure many of you would have heard about this is called hawthorne effect or observer observer effect what this principally means that you get what you measure so moment people come to know that they are being measured or a quality metric let's say uh, defect density or any other any other metric for that matter so they will they will perform they will uh, behave in a way that they will show the best output right moment you know that uh, let's say very interesting example i i came across uh, in one of the presentation is that uh, 
a manager is announcing probably to the team that okay fine i'll be giving someone a gold medal for you know zero defect and suddenly you know from the next minute onwards there are zero defects coming out from the team right so so you program the behavior so you have to be aware of this hawthorne and observer defect okay what are some of those metrics that matter for systems optimization right uh, i use this graphic i i, I found this uh, very interesting graphic on google and, and i found that this has most of the metrics that one would look for right for example work in progress and i i recollect from earlier karupaya's uh, presentation on kanban workflow and you know, where some of those uh, metrics really help in systems level optimization like cycle time lead time uh, there's something what is called is uh, <clears throat> uh, cost of quality or cost of delay. Velocity is a very interesting uh, measure. You know, there's a lot of uh, debate, a lot of discussion going on, but we'll see how velocity can be used as a metric that really matters. So in Agile, we also look at the people aspects. Uh, this is a very interesting aspect. Uh, uh, even if you look at uh, Agile values and Agile principles, the authors have brought in the angle of people, right? People and interactions over process and tools. In the second Agile value talks about that in the Agile Manifesto, right? And since it is to do with people, they are empowered, they are self-managed, they are self-organized. So it's very important to see, you know, how they are performing as a team, uh, how they have collective team level accountability, and how they are delivering. So they are checking regularly on the team morale and team health. Also becomes one of very important metrics that really matter. And there's a direct, uh, you can connect the metrics uh, to Agile principles and values. I'll not like speak much because we already covered this in the previous session. However, suffice to say that the metrics and key measures, they address directly or indirectly any of the Agile principles. Um, anyone that you can think of, like for example, continuous attention with technical excellence and good design, right? Uh, a metric has to reflect that, right? And then the metric will tell whether this software is done, how much amount of rework has happened on that, uh, how quickly the feature has has uh, propagated uh, from conception to development to testing and then into the hands of the customer in form of a, a release or a drop. So uh, there's a direct relation, and there could be an indirect relation. And most important thing is metrics must provide insights into current performance how we are performing, whether, let's say, for example, uh, we measure cycle time and lead time and say that, okay, from cradle to grave, it takes 75 days. Now, is this good enough? And when we do that flow analysis, flow efficiency, we find that, okay, there are certain places in this entire flow where we can still do some optimization, right? Uh, whether the capacity is matching or not, whether the whip limits have been set appropriately or not or are there any missing parts in the flow which have not been identified? So we have not analyzed our flow appropriately, workflow, right? So there, so your metric should provide insights into current performance, right? So this is one of the very important aspect when we, as a team, as an R&D organization or as a project management organization, decide and determine what are some of those metrics we'd like to set up, what are some of those measurements we'd be interested in to identify what, how does the current performance looks like and what kind of improvements can be further thought about. I would like to stop here and ask if anyone has any questions, any thoughts to share so far? Hiran, and uh, like, let's take the principle 10 and how we can associate uh, the, the, the related metrics or metric. Yeah, so when you talk about, uh, again, the favorite topic, right? Uh, number 10, uh, simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work done. We relate it to my understanding, we relate it to something what we call as minimum viable product. Now, how do we measure whether our minimum viable product? One can say, let's look at the release burn down. I would rather actually like to see what's my feature burn rate, right? If I can uh, measure my feature burn rate in one way and I can have a good, clear, a transparent visualization around that feature burn rate, I can say, predict, okay, fine. By going by this feature burn rate, this burn down will be hitting this date. And this will this is going to be part of my this. MVP, minimum viable product. I have seen teams focusing in this way, one way to address that principle number 10 in uh, seeing the feature burn rate. Then there's also an aspect of automation. We have seen many metrics coming from the DevOps space, uh, how quickly we deliver, 
how quickly we have set up the automation in the pipeline so that you know uh, within within minutes we have seen like drops the releases going out of the door and in, into the production environment into the test environment into the train environment for the customer so there could be set of such observations which can address this particular principle from agile manifesto Kiran, this me hurry here, okay. Kiran. Uh, I yes, just have a question in mind, Kiran. Kiran, uh, I'm just wondering, like you know, uh, uh, how we go about, you know, uh, the predictability is generally uh, measured by looking at the velocity of the teams. In a similar way, how is that uh, the productivity of the teams is really measured? What is the mechanism we are using to measure the productivity of the teams? Uh, you know if you if you hold on uh, hari i uh, got uh, in the upcoming slides some of these uh, references to okay some of those metrics that sure uh, sure sure no worries yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you are you are spot on when you talk about like predictability velocity uh, again is slightly i would say uh, not very well understood uh, there are a lot of misconception around velocity velocity still is being used for com team comparison which is not the real purpose of velocity we all know yeah. that right we have we have worked on those those yeah, yeah. barriers but uh, you know this pr productivity is something which i'm still wondering because people say you know how many stories are getting completed that also matters for the productivity of the team but i don't know what is the real measure to know how productivity is uh, being really measured here yeah productivity is realized over a period of time right as the team matures as because there's no one factor directly impacting productivity there mm. are multiple factors correct uh, it is the quality of the processes is the mm. is the stability of the processes is the maturity of the team in practices let's say tdd as a practice how mature are the teams in that right correct, correct. Uh, let's say some of the xp practices how mm. how mature teams in that right okay. and then you will see even even as these practices mature and teams also transform transition from uh, mm. noises to okay. intermediate and then to exalted like right. high performing teams right we'll right. see these things come naturally to some of these high performing teams so here in you you mean to see that uh, the maturity will be directly proportional to the productivity or something Yes, yes, it is. It is definitely related, right? When I say maturity is maturity, I am talking in terms of three hundred and sixty degree maturity, right? Maturity in terms of the practices, maturity in terms of the processes, even mm -hmm. requirements still becomes the biggest, uh, biggest uh, uh, lacuna, right? Even we have seen in today, uh, even with high maturity yeah. who have established practices. I have my case study. I will. I will talk about that. That. Yeah, yeah. have been continuously improving velocity but they were yeah. never able to make delivery so, on time so you know extended to the same question i have another question in mind see uh, like you know when you see measuring the productivity is it like you do that uh, measurement over a sprint or how is it being really uh, uh, yeah, what is the cadence or what is the what is the what is the time frame in which the product when you good question uh, hari that's fantastic i think this is very thought provoking and uh, as part of the scpg group many of who are, who are here here are experienced leaders and all that definitely this question would have would have really kept them awake at night okay what do i do it so first i would like to say that how do you define productivity that should be your first goal what is what does productivity really mean because you know in in moment uh, in a middle management layer and upwards there's always a focus mm. question on productivity right simple words productivity means getting more done mm. in okay. a certain amount of time what we are getting done like say 10 days this was our out output right and yeah. can we see some tangible improvements today my team in the last 6 months was averaging 12 story points now mm. they are averaging 15 story points can i say for sure that their productivity is in increase or they were like sheer lucky or what kind of measures do i have to see now do i expect them to improve like 20% continuous on continuous basis so from 12 to 15 to 18 and mm. how far this will go and then you to relate this uh, improvement in performance with the customer satisfaction so on one hand you are seeing high performing teams on other hand you see your c set staying flat 40% or 50 then again given one more one That's more scenario yeah. one more scenario what i would say is you know you see the productivity is you know showing 15 story points in the first sprint then again in the next sprint you know it goes down and the next sprint again it comes up so that contiguity you know that's that's kind of getting lost so Absolutely. now yeah wonderful so, go ahead 
So now, you know, when you really measure the productivity, you are not able to get a consistent result also like uh, here the next. So that is a wonderful observation, Hari. What you said is like, for example, velocity up and down. So what you have to do, you have to first sit down and analyze why we are seeing this trend, right? Mm -hmm. On Monday, for two spent it was going up. So we are very yeah. happy. And then suddenly we see... Because I myself have observed in teams, teams uh, even this uh, this phenomena generally occurs actually. It is, it is a very common phenomenon. It, I am not surprised. Uh, I, I would be actually surprised if no one in this group has seen this <laughs> kind of. So, Kiran and uh, Hari, I believe yeah. usually we need to wait for six sprints to find yes. out uh, the velocity. It is so not you have you have to set some a kind of a let's say if if you coming if you talk about let's say just for a moment at David like you you talk about like statistical process control. What you do is you define control limits, right? You yeah. say that my process is stable as long as Correct, yeah. is upper limit and. Yeah. And I, over a period of time, I see the trends. So always mm -hmm. look for trends. Never look for instances. Correct. Correct. Trends uh, over a period. That's why we look for CFDs, cumulative flow diagram, because we yep. we we see over a period of time how the things are trending. Mm -hmm. Is it stabilizing? Is it remaining steady? Correct. Correct. Is it going correct. Up and down frequently, uh, and then you have to analyze, and then you have to go okay. behind the curtain and see. Okay, oh my God, what's happening? You never upgrade this server. That's why you continue to have these delays and then... You know, so, uh, here and again, you are summarizing, saying that productivity cannot be really measured over a short period of time. We should yeah. have enough time to measure the productivity, right? And, and there are other theories also there, like if you if you, if you you know about the J-curve, hockey stick curve, you know, you uh, improve reach a level, then you again see a dip and then go up again, right? So, you have... Oh, okay. Okay. So hurry and uh, Hiran, if I may interrupt, right? And and that's what Hiran, Hiran, I think it's one of the first statements he made, right? Like velocity is very misinterpreted by most of us, right? And me being an agilist as well, right? So uh, as as Hari mentioned, what is productivity to you that we need to jot down first, right? For some managers, uh, productivity might only mean a team level co co collaboration, right? For others, it may need how many features you are rolling out each sprint. What is your MVP looking like? What is the business yeah. value you're bringing in? over a period of time and they might not even want to look at velocity for example my stakeholders they just have velocity because i work in safe so they just have velocity velocity for the sake of estimation and capacity planning and going into pi planning understanding how much work a team can do right for example one team of mine has a velocity of 44 but the other team has an average velocity of 14 but at the end of the pi or a, or to simplify things at the end of a few sprints i see that the team number 2 with the velocity of 14 is actually delivering more features and bringing in more business value than the team that is that has a 44 uh, st story point velocity right yeah so, that, that's that's another catch uh, yeah. uh, there's, there's, because... there's a caveat there in that yeah exactly <laughs> i mean this this so, can go on i know this is absolutely this is so topic. what i i what i want to conclude with is see uh, productivity is based on what you want to measure as Hiren mentioned in one of his earlier slides right you see what you want to measure right um, mm -hmm. it is as simple as that so it depends on you what do you exactly mean by productivity is for you is productivity for you customer satisfaction so you measure in measure measure it that way obviously you will not measure it by story points right is producti productivity about uh, less defect less mm -hmm. bugs then you measure it that way right it's correct, correct. about the amount of work being done and you don't care about the business value or the value it's bringing to the table yeah, yeah, yeah. then you go into story points people, tasks, people will jack up all the they will exactly velocity and then correct, it will be all crap and the same one sprint, <laughs> one sprint the same story point uh, estimates at uh, five the other sprint it, they can estimate it at ten but that doesn't correct, mean correct, double the work right relative, yeah. so, this, yeah. is, this is a wonderful and, and, and shahzab yeah. ahmed i really appreciate yeah. thanks yeah ahmed thanks lord ahmed Wonderful no, for no, you no. to pitch in, yeah. Wonderful. When, Thanks, when, we, when we look at all the frameworks, right? Like, you see, yeah. again, that's why this principle is very important, right? No matter what framework you're, whether you're safe or scrum or any, what essentially here the agile proponents, we all of us are agile proponents. We all what we believe is that okay, value. We have to first have an understanding that okay, is the value being delivered? Is the value being delivered mm -hmm. consistently? Is the value being delivered on a more or less a predictable fashion, right? Yeah, there, there will be some deviations here and there because we are in a VUCA world after all. But are we able to manage the delivery of continuous delivery value despite uh, the, the business headwinds and every other headwind that we face yeah. right, on a regular basis? But very interesting observation. Really. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Samet. Thank you. I'll just a uh, little bit uh, improve my velocity here a little bit as this is a very interesting topic and I'm sure in the subsequent slides also there will be more uh, provoking uh, points uh, people to talk about. So when we when we talk about agile metrics, this is not like a comprehensive list, but I've just presented it here to tell 
the key message which is on the right hand side is that look for those metrics that provide insight into you know uh, your performance or productivity through different stages of software development life cycle as the product gets conceptualized and then gets designed and developed and finally tested and gets delivered into the hands of a customer right so you look at you know work in progress which is lack of velocity sprint burn down and these are all great visualizations to tell you you know uh, you can see ahead in the time whether you are going to meet the deadline you're going beyond that or you're going to finish early and then some of the process health and bottlenecks for example kanban where kanban plays a very big role and i am thankful to have attended karupia's presentation last saturday last last saturday cycle time um, we really have to see how the long poles can be identified in cycle time and if you can identify those long poles and do something about those long poles and you can you know continuous to reduce cycle time we did this in our case study i'll just spend few minutes in the subsequent slide and last but not the least uh, quality is is all in capacity right so even the mindset about quality has been changing a lot uh, we have come a long way from thinking quality as just merely the function of a testing to a quality which is all, all encompassing quality is basically about excellence in everything that we do uh, uh, right from customer collaboration to uh, coding to design development even even collaborating with each other even analyzing issues so quality is is more of a mindset than a, just a testing function right okay uh, this is a wonderful uh, snippet of some of the matrix that matter that I caught attention uh, while I was doing my research and I was really very very inspired by by the author who put this all together and this is what I have also tried to bring it in in my consultation and wherever you know the projects that have some challenges and we try to bring about you know some new measures so coming back to this like agility as a matrix matter is about continuous delivery of value consistently and in a predictable fashion and uh, since we work <clears throat> in a team setting where the teams are self managed self organized uh, we have to see uh, whatever that we are taking from cradle to the grave any product or good or service do we have the proper visualization of the flow so you can't manage something that you can't visualize so first you have to see how do you visualize so you you go with the kanban and visualize your flow and there in kanban you also see how do you how do you categorize factor the various stages in your flow right every flow can be broken into various steps intermediate steps and then concluding steps and the beginning steps like that and the things move from one to the other in in stages right so like said assembly line you can see first part you fit some two points here and there some screws of it that goes to the next bay where some spray paint is done and the third bay where the door is fit to the chassis and then finally the whole vehicle bar car is pushed out and getting into the garage. So work in progress, uh, how, number of work items started but not yet finished. So if you can visualize that, you'll see that this card has been lying on this day for day one, day two, day three. What's going on? So you have this visualization, you know that, okay, there's something that is blocking. Either the there's some breakdown in the apparatus, the process is not clear, the, the infrastructure is not there, the person is not there, or the person doesn't have the skill to perform that task. So, you know, a lot of things can come out of this. All of these insights will be there if you have this kind of a measure in the first place. Setting VIP limit, right? Uh, any process, if you if you optimize that, you can see that, okay, fine. Uh, there are certain minimum number of steps need to be done. Uh, in my last uh, Kanban example, Karupia gave a wonderful example of, of assembling a furniture piece, like a chair, right? So someone will be cutting the pieces, someone will be polishing the pieces to the right specification and, and dimensions, millimeters and centimeters so that it can fit. Third bait will be fit into, and then the fourth bait will be painted and brushed and then, you know, packaged. So whip limit, okay, there's, there's, a cert, there's a certain set of activities that need to be done before the new item can be brought in, so like more like a pull scenario. And then you see, you know, how this work item age, how the item is aging, remaining in that particular bay. You can set some service level expectation. You can say that if this goes beyond 24 hours, then we need to do something about it before before pulling in the new item from the queue. And this is where you have to measure the throughput. So you know everyone would have been aware of the Littles law, right? So the throughput is basically simply put number of work items finished per unit of time. Uh, Kiran, 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 sorry, to, sorry to interrupt you, Kiran. Kiran, I, I just came across somewhere, you know, 
uh, when I was uh, reading probably safe scalars in framework, something like, you know, it was saying about the holding cost. Is that getting anywhere related here, like Kiran? Uh, I am first of all not a safe expert, so I'm not really. Oh, okay, okay. No, but it's I can not. relate. But I can relate. Uh, there is something what we call as like cost of delay. Yeah. Uh, where it means that uh, what's the impact uh, of this thing not getting out mm -hmm. until a certain period. Of time. Sorry to interrupt. The water you said again. The cost of delay is equal to holding cost. Cost of delay is what you are unable to deliver the product on time. It is mm -hmm. getting hold on a particular stage. Absolutely. Right. Yes. What is it is right, Tahira. Yeah, Thanks for thanks, thanks, yeah, yeah, so. Even like, you know, large batches might not go through. So that also can be a holding cost uh, delay. I mean, yeah, right? That's a wonderful point. So, Kiran Karpia, you know, we can say in the contract, sometimes if you don't deliver by this time, you need to pay, right? Some regulatory projects. And, uh, some yes, of the, everything is a holding cost. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Holding cost, yeah. Holding cost, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Even, even this is itself is a big topic. Uh, uh, one day I will, I'll take a session on agile. I know, I know. Yeah. Good. All right. So I, I think this is a good conversation, and I, I I'm seeing that uh, it is resonating with all of you. Wonderful uh, observation and uh, and mm. uh, responses. So all of these, you know, uh, will one way or the other help you identify where are the blocks, and this is what you need to know in order to identify, you know, uh, look for opportunities for systems level optimization. Right. More often than not, we have seen like people try to do sub optimization that not does not really help. But if we can have these kind of metrics that help us give us good insights into where are the things getting blocked repetitively and then we cannot do anything about it. So these kind of measures will really help us discover and then do something about it. Right. So these metrics, in my opinion, and I'm sure all of you also would agree to a certain extent that yeah, these are some of the things that if we can have this kind of system of metrics in place, it will help us a lot in bringing out a lot of improvements in the way we deliver the value to the customer. All right, I am just doing the time check to see how fast I need to go. All right, uh, Vijay, it's okay. Uh, we, if required, we can a little bit extend. Yeah, just need to check with people. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It's perfectly okay, fine. I, I'm just, uh, will, no, I will not have a big of interest, than... but... Uh, Knowingly, I'm not, not getting into it. <laughs> yeah, I very interesting goal. Uh, yes. Because this is for the people. Well, if we have one more session, session, that would be really great. So some of the examples I've, I like to show here, and uh, these are all uh, very valuable. So CMD, if you see a uh, uh, cumulative flow diagram, uh, it shows the the arrival departure of work items through different stages of development, right? So this is a very simplistic figure. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can see a much more uh, a detailed figure where the, the most uh, bottom uh, bottom uh, polygon, uh, the blue, blue color is the one that shows about the rate at which the items are getting done, done from all doneness perspective, and then finally being delivered. So you see the various uh, stages the the inclines are almost parallel as if you know there's a consistent uh, work in progress always there's a consistent similar uh, i mean same amount of work in progress uh, throughout the development life cycle so you don't see any variation either the lines are not uh, radiating apart or they are like going you know uh, like plateaus and then inclines and then plateaus and incline it's a steady incline that you can see here so yeah. that also tells about the uh, stability of your uh, of your flow, your flow efficiency, and the process. Yeah, someone has any comment here? Yeah, so so, so here in the very interesting, uh, thank you so much. See, there is this team from uh, at and and Verizon kind of uh, hardcore telecom uh, yeah. R&D kind of uh, team. And uh, they are basically inward looking. I mean, they work on horizontal components. They, they their components may not, may not be used by the end consumers or the last mile users. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, well, their R&D team, uh, while, you know, how to, what kind of metrics will be okay as per your experience for this kind of, uh, you know, internal teams for the R&D and internal architectural kind of components they do, Kiran? See, uh, um, t highly technical domain, like technic, uh, like a telecom domain, right? Uh, they also work with various standards and platforms and technology. 
ultimately they are building something that that has to be consumed in one way or the other right so they have some kind of an expectation some let us say sell expectation if they have even if they are like pure r and d right they are building the new generation framework so they must be having certain kinds of goals set right so i would i would uh, see from their perspective what uh, what is their objective what kind of goal they are going to set for this are they going to look for quality like uh, any engineering uh, function let's say boeing for that matter right uh, boeing had this big issues right with their uh, max 8 series right so what they would do they would like to sharpen up their quality inspection and try to ensure that it is like more stringent more regulated a little bit get gets more bureaucratic because you know then there are high stakes even even in healthcare the domain where i work there is always high stakes because it is to do deal with the human's health and we have seen uh, fatalities also occurring because of uh, misadventures uh, being done in the software development practices right so short answer to your question would be to to really team to look at what is their goal and objective against which they would like to set some measures and standards and operate against those standards and measures sure hiran hiran there is this uh, there is this pro product owner so by, by all following this kind of metrics but this particular product owner you know uh, you know if a team presents 25 story points in iteration by following some of these metrics mm. and then this product owner you know what he does he he calculates the tech debt by this team tech debt is equal to some five story points so mm -hmm. he what he does he will deduct the five story points from the 25 only then 20 only he will be awarded to the team so he makes sure that tech debt is always being the own by the development team have you come across that how to deal with such kind of uh, metrics this is very very unique uh, very unprecedented uh, example and first of all uh, interesting to see that product owner is talking about tech debt so must be a technical yes. product owner <laughs> so yes. basically what it uh, what essentially tells that uh, when the team had successfully completed the sprint and they came to a sprint review and showcase this product owner analyzed and say okay i accept only 20 or 25 story points they could, it could be fair enough but he has uh, i would say he or she has a responsibility to tell where where the acceptance criteria is not fulfilling so this goes back to goes back to you know feedback loop and say okay fine this is the requirement. This is what we had uh, acceptance criteria, and this is our definition of done, right? So acceptance criteria tells that this is how the story will be accepted, and definitely done tells okay, all my as Karupia would like to say, make policies explicit and definition of done. You know, coding, unit testing, everything else is done, and then is this fit? Do you consider this fit? Do we put? Can we put this in the hands of customer? Will this be accepted by the end user? That's 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 kind of close the topic there. But he, he has the right, the authority. To give this feedback of accepting or not accepting and then the team has to collaborate and analyze and see okay fine does this is this like a rework of a user story or is it a new requirement can we create a new user story so it has to be more of a conversation from that that's how i see the situation uh, but good question i i think this is very interesting i have this is the first time i'm seeing a, a product owner talking about tech depth sure thanks thanks Hiren. Yeah. all right wonderful thanks for that question so again uh, uh, you can you can very well appreciate the visualization so what do you get out of this you have to always analyze uh, from these uh, a good project manager or a good uh, leader a good manager will always like to see the trends rather than looking in si singular events I would like to see over a period of time how the trends uh, and on this also that's why this uh, spotify model uh, you see the up arrow the down arrow and the, the rack indicators red amber and green to tell whether the thing is remaining steady looks good or things is slightly better and it is not so good at all and these health 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 uh, team or process health metrics will tell you the state of the union of the teams how the teams are feeling which is very important uh when the team works in a pressure zone like in agile where they are you know if they are working in scrum it is like working into time box iteration where they have to fulfill all the sprint goals that they have committed to definitely there will be some amount of stress but as a unit are they having holding each other accountable rather than rather than just saying okay my job i am done with my job and i don't care less or more what others are doing that's not the way team operates uh, in agile so that's why these health metrics are very important to ensure that the team is working as a unit and there's a very healthy environment for them to operate the what we also talk nowadays we have a lot of talk is going about creating psychological safe environment right 
uh, are people empowered uh, do they do they uh, do they freely experiment and they are not afraid of experimenting and failing and then they are learning from those experiments and trying to uh, learn something better right so these are all the new topics we have seen in in, in this modern workplace where uh, a manager's responsibility is also to create and provide or a leader's rather a leader's responsibility is to create and provide a psychological safe environment for the teams to operate all right, uh, moving on. So this case study, uh, I have given the link here, which you can go through. It's in the public domain. Uh, so the PLM excellence part of Siemens Healthcare, uh, we work with uh, one of the Karman experts called Daniel Vacanti. You can search for him in his organization called corporatekarman.com. So if you read the left to right, the problem statement, uh, we were already uh, mature on Scrum, uh, start having started from early from 2004 and five. This was sometime in 2009 and 10. So we wanted to become more mature and uh, improve our efficiencies. But when we did this problem analysis, problem statement, we found that we are still not able to deliver on community case rates. We are falling short of expectations. And mind you, tell, let me tell you that when you are working in healthcare domain, there are certain regulations which you have to comply. It's a kind of no negotiation uh, state of the affairs. Uh, we also had established a, a wonderful system of metrics, but they did not provide any kind of insights into what's the real state of the teams, how we are performing, whether we are really good, bad, or ugly. There was no idea. We are not able to forecast with high degree of confidence. So our forecasts were a kind of very, very uh, varying uh, with the actuals. And uh, as, I, as I mentioned, this why it's important because uh, for uh, abiding and complying with some of the healthcare regulation, mostly with US healthcare, which is one of the most highly regulated uh, domains anywhere in the world, let's see. So this ability to forecast with confidence is paramount importance to us. And teams are still challenged to plan and complete the work, uh, especially in the last week of the sprint, there will be mad, mad rush to collect as many story points as possible so that we look good in the minds, uh, in the eyes of our seniors and managers. Okay, fine, this team is really good. They're clocking good velocity. So then we sat down and say, okay, what we need to do. And then we worked through a solution through different stages and phases. It was not done in one go. So we had piloted first phase and then we made some more changes in the phase two. And through careful adoption of Kanban and uh, doing systemic analysis of underlying, uh, you know, blocks, we are able to we are able to improve our situation. So some of the things we did was to establish a pull system. We reduced the batch sizes. Early we were working through big big features, going through six months to twelve months of releases. We cut down to quarter uh, releases, shorter uh, uh, release timelines. Reduced batch sizes. And we established a model Kanban uh, boards for different classes of uh, items, different classes of services. As you see, in Kanban, you can have different swim lanes and different whip limits and all that we can set. So after going through this uh, transformation, we were able to realize good benefits. First and most important benefit we realized was there was, was real-time insight into where we are, you know, having systemic blocks, where our story is being stuck. Uh, what kind of issues we had in terms of infrastructure, in terms of skills, in terms of people, and all this stuff really came out in the open. And uh, once we once we saw this multi-phase uh, transformation, we could see some tangible improvements. Uh, so, if I can just cherry pick some charts from that uh, big detail analysis study. So, on the left hand side, you see cycle times. It was a scatter plot. It's it's like all over. It's like increasing, right? If you see here, it's not stabilized. So this was before we had initiated the change. And in the bottom picture, if you see here, the cycle times, you know, at their 95th percentile, uh, stabilizing to 30. I think it is 40 days somewhere. Yeah. So we are stabilizing after that adoption of Kanban. Similarly, if you see our CFD, it was like diverging arrival and departure. So it means our whip is continuously increasing. Right, so the amount of work in progress is is uh, regularly increasing over a period of time, and then we stabilize that by changing or you know introducing the whip limits into our flow. So these are some of the benefits. There, there are more details in the case study. You can go through. Hiran, 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 sorry to interrupt you, Hiran, again. Hiran, I have one question. Like uh, the the scenario, what you explain right now, you know, what I find is. This is for more like, you know, you are, you considered something running in Scrum and then you took a Kanban approach and that really gave you the uh, uh, end result, which was better, right? 
So now can this be applied for all these crumb kind of projects or uh, it will not apply for some projects also, is it? No, no, it is, it is not like one size fits all kind of approach. We, we really analyze our situation and uh, we had a, a global PLM excellence team. So our uh, uh, directors and other uh, Because what I'm saying is, you know, in case it's kind of, uh, it can be uh, unanimously accepted, then why do we have Scrum at all, right? Good question. No, no, good question. Uh, so the way I see it and I, I can answer is like this. There could be still some situation where you really like to have a time box approach, right? Okay, here is a backlog. This is my MVP. Here are the stories. Now get Ooh. this thing done. This is my release. So can we work to this forecast for this release in Scrum, right? Ooh. Ooh. Now, if you want to have, uh, let's say you come to, nowadays if you see there are, there are teams which are working now, moving out from... Uh, early version of Scrum to a newer version of Scrum where they break down into feature-driven development. Mm -hmm. So they build vertical slices. Yes. Right? In the vertical slices, you have seen from more feature level. So your 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 term of reference is a feature rather than a time box set of uh, items, right? So then you can think of, can I create a flow and I can see, I, I really want to improve my cycle time. I see my mm -hmm. feature uh, delivery happens 70 days. I want to improve 60 days to 50 days like that then you can think and say whether this model will work for you or not. Then you go and adopt that model. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, Kiran. So it, it, will, be, it will be contextual. Uh, yeah. When you start something new, I would say always start with like, you know, it's like kind of, a, there's a Japanese term called Shuhari. Right? Yeah. So first- I know, it's more like a farming You want something better. And then when you're more mature on that, then you go with- the Farming, right? Software yeah. systems, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. Thanks. I appreciate that. Just before summing up, uh, in the topic, I realized that uh, we got to focus so, more, so much on the, the development piece, but uh, being an agilist, we see the things end to end from beginning till the end. And with the DevOps, we cannot uh, neglect and ignore some of the important measures that DevOps provide. Like, for example, this is a, a, a survey result from the state of the DevOps. 2019 survey quite a little bit old one but yeah very relevant and uh, i have seen that with devops and with the automation in the devops uh, that's a game changer and it has really enabled organizations to address both speed and quality at the same time so earlier it was difficult whether if you go with speed then quality will be compromised and vice versa but now with the automation and devops it's uh, it's equally uh, you know uh, capable to get both the speed and quality at the same time there are some of the measures that came to my mind and I, I picked it up from this survey that, you know, that when you are having DevOps, you are focusing also on your delivery and operational performance metrics and excellence, like what we call like OPEX. So uh, lead time for changes, you know, how long does it take for a change to get from dev to production and your deployment frequency, right? how often is a change deployed, then time to restore a service. If let's say your production server is down or your last two builds have failed, how quickly are you able to restore? And, and if your customer is also accustomed to this uh, way of working, the customer expect that, okay, we will be having regular drops and regular releases, and they shouldn't be surprised when they don't see a next drop coming in. Like, yeah. uh, Hiran, I think there's one metric like MTTR, right? Mean time to uh, yes, yes. respond. To restore or something. Actually. Restore or respond. Mean time to respond. Yeah, yeah. Respond, respond. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So these are all uh, from uh, DevOps and from operational performance, which also play a major role in ensuring that your agility, you know, you are able to address that aspect of agility, right? How quickly? Sometimes I've seen teams really, really good building something really quick, but then their deployment takes ages, right? So, and then we all know as engineers and who have trained with the DevOps uh, nightmares we see, right? Sometimes the production environment will go kaput and we'll have no idea what's the reason. And then you have to do a lot of search. So building consistency in your automated build pipelines, a lot of automation frameworks available both uh, in Microsoft world and non-Microsoft uh, open source world, which allows uh, this uh, high degree of automation. So with this, I'll end my session here. Thanks uh, all of you. Sorry, I did not have any slide or some quiz to <laughs> yeah. get some more interest, but uh, this is a very vast, very interesting topic and you can oh. actually have a full day session on this topic. Frankly speaking, yeah. Thanks, Vijay. Thanks, Vijay. And, Thanks uh, Vijay. it was really nice uh, interacting with you guys. Yeah. Same here. Equally, same. Place. Same here. Same here, Harry. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you.
experience. It's a wonderful Thank experience. Thank you, guys. <sighs> Thanks, all of you. It's really Thanks fantastic. Thanks for back. I know it's been an extended session today, but yeah, I think it was really very, very no, good. No, it's true. None no. of those can be completed in the separate period of one hour. You have to yeah. explain. <laughs> it's a vast topic. Rightly said, Chris. And Vijay, now it's a second.